Hello everyone, for, uh, thank you for tuning in to watch. Uh, this is episode four, we've got Chris Butler, a good friend of mine. Um, we met over 10 years ago um, when he started, when he was at uni I believe, um, and he came into, in, into Wickham in an environment where I was working. Um, and he's going to share a couple of his experiences um, to where he is today. He's currently 9-14's to 14's leader, goalkeeper coach at Wolves, is that right? Yeah, 9-14's to 14's goalkeeping lead in the academy. <clears throat> Perfect. So, but uh, first of all, thanks, thanks for joining us, Chris. Really appreciate you coming on tonight and sparing some of your time. Um, I know you've been obviously very busy and um, a long, long day for you today. So thank you for joining us. No, no. Thank you for obviously having me as well, mate. No problem. Good. Right. So we'll get straight into it. So um, can you take me through um, your coaching pathway so you experience, uh, so you, maybe your job roles are up to date? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know how long you've got, but it's a big list. <laughs> so, obviously, as Adam said, um, my, my sort of journey really started about 10 years ago now in 2010, um, where I attended uh, Books New Uni down in High Wycombe, um, and I was there for three years. And my first sort of coaching role was was a disability coach for Marlow FC. Um, hopefully, that obviously, those that are listening would, would know what the football club is like, um, a very kind of family-run club and, and very close to, to High Wycombe in terms of obviously the popularity there. Um, I was a volunteer um, and again I was working in the disability, the disability area of the, uh, of the club um, and then that gave me my first sort of coaching badge. Milo FC put me on the disability coaching award um, so that was my first sort of step into, into coaching um, and then during my time at university I became a FA ambassador um, as a volunteer um, where I tried to get in the sport of futsal within um, within our, our university. Uh, and for two years, it, it run really well. Um, and then I became also in my first year in 2010, a community coach at Wickham, obviously with yourself, Adam. And mm. I wasn't driving at the time, so you, you were taking me to most of the places. Um, I remember, mate. I yeah, used, I you were dropping me off. Well, I was assisting you. Um, well, where was your, your uh, you were down, where was your uh, uni flat? Uh, Dashwood, just Dashwood, behind yeah. the hospital. I remember, I, remember yeah. I used to yeah. drive down, pick you up, and then we used to go to... Oh, stay <laughs> That's it. After yeah. school clubs, holiday camps. Yeah, so obviously that was my sort of first kind of coaching in terms of like variations of coaching. So obviously different age groups, boys, girls... Um, and, and obviously that was where I really started to learn the kind of trade as a coach um, and learn off yourself and, and obviously the other guys that were there um, at Wickham at the time. And I, said, I, said, I, I said, I said, I said a lot, is it, it's quite a trend in terms of coaches that have gone on to do quite well. Um, those that have worked in community schemes or gone to America and worked with obviously summer camps and stuff and it just it gives you a real good foundation doesn't it and just, even just yeah. learning about kids in general yeah it's to, to be fair without that I don't think I'll be where I am now mm. um, to, to obviously learn the sort of kind of ways to coach you know different age groups and certain and certain children and, and you know most people kind of jump into coaching and think every, every, every child's the same um, mm. and, and they're just not um, obviously I struggled at first because that's how I how I came about it was sort of like and how I approached it was um, you know Jack Stacy, and, and Trevor are all the same children um, mm. I can coach them all the same and, and it just, just wasn't like that so I really learned as a coach and really grew as a coach through those through those years as a community coach um, so and you're definitely right you know you have to put the hard times in to, to get success within coaching um, and obviously I'll, I'll go further um, within my, my, my sort of experience to, to where I am now and, you, and you'll see that um, and obviously that during that time is when I learnt my, my FA level one and two down at Bisham Abbey um, and you know that again that was another stepping stone into in terms of coaching and my learning um, and then I'll be did you, like, did, did you did you do that through Wickham was it through uni uh, through uni uh, through, through the uni. course yeah, yeah through the course and it was one of the reasons why I picked that course um it was a sort of sitting there and I want to get into football and I want to get into coaching. I didn't know at the time what type of coaching I wanted to get into. Uh, but, you know, Books Uni was offering the level one and two and I thought it was a great opportunity to, to, to obviously join that uni to get those qualifications. 
Yeah. Um, and obviously, yeah, I, I passed the level one and two, which was obviously pleasing and, and something which was a big achievement at the time for myself. Um, and then I, I did a lot more volunteer stuff. Um, and I, I'm not sure if you've heard of the Grassroots Football Show. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, yeah. It was running in Birmingham. It ran for about three years uh, each, each summer through the three years. Um, and I joined in their second year. And I was a runner again, so just a volunteer, just fetching a cup of teas for people. Um, one of my highlights was I, I took a suit to Ian Dewey uh, wow. to his hotel room. Um, I won't tell you how he opened the door, but he wasn't wearing much. Uh, that, was a great, that was a great experience. Oh, what a sight that is, Ian Dewey opening the door. I know, I know. I know. So, but to be fair, we, we, we obviously we all stopped in the same hotel and he gave me his number at the at the bar and just said like you know I gave him my story really of obviously wanting to start coaching and stuff and he, he said any anything he can help with um just give him a give him a bell um and Good. you know to be fair to him and, and true to his word I, I sent him a text must have been about a year after um just before I was leaving uni and, and he you know he was really supportive in his text which was really nice yeah, I, I find I find that with uh, with people that have been right at the top of the game, um, they're very open and they they always offer assistance where it's needed. So, um, my my wife now she lived uh, below Chris Ramsey's flat, mm. um, and even people like that that are really high up in the game. I've had chats with him, and he's invited yeah. me around for coffee yeah. just to just to talk about football and offered his uh, assistance, which is which is massive. Which is no, definitely. I, I mean, like I, I've I've Obviously, now of where I am, I've come across quite a lot of professionals and ex-professionals, whether yeah. it's players or, or managers or coaches, and and everyone's open. Um, I haven't really met anyone that's just kind of closed the door and mm. um, kind of slammed it in your face. Like you say, that, that there's so many kind of open people out there to help and support those that are coming through. Mm. Um, so obviously, as, as that as I was working at the grassroots football show, um, one of the biggest sort of turnarounds for me in terms of my career um there was a, a store there uh, called strike zone um mm. and it's a football boot with different colors on for different parts of the foot and then you had the football with the same colors on so it was a red on the laces so you get the hit the red bit on the ball so the techniques uh, for the very very young age groups um and i simply just said hello to the the, the guy running it um his name's gary gallagher um mm. and Literally a month after the grassroots football show, I had a phone call from him um, and he offered me to go and coach over Norway on, on a camp that he was running. Wow. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't refuse it. I went straight for it. Um, and then obviously I've I, I done um, about five or six camps over a period of two years over in Norway. Yeah. Um, and again, as, as a coach coming through and a coach wanting to learn, it was massive. Um, and again, it, it kind of pushed my experiences, um, especially with the language barriers as well, that I had to coach a different way. Um, and it was really, really good and, and really learned me, you know, I learned quite a lot. Um, and then that bring, bring me to, brought me to obviously coaching in Norway, but then I also had an opportunity to go over to, to America. Um, and I was there for about a month or two uh, with the CEO of the company of Strike Zone. Um, and again, it was a volunteer basis, but obviously I, I had everything paid for, so the flights, the, the accommodation and stuff. Um, so obviously it wasn't a, a money loss, but it was a massive experience to gain. Mm. Um, and again, I was, at, I was at uni at the time. Um, I was a community coach um, at Wickham. So, you know, it was running alongside that. Um, and then I became, just before I finished, finished uni in my last year, I became the elite centre goalkeeping coach. Um, Corin Evans, who who works at Wickham, he, he left. Yeah. Um, so I took it, took his role, um, and again, that was the first sort of time that I stepped into a goalkeeping coach's shoes. Um, yeah. And that was where I really kind of changed my direction as of a coach, um, and and kind of understood where I wanted to go as a coach. So obviously, I became the, the goalkeeping coach then, um, as I as I'm known now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. Obviously, I finished university um, and, and I had all that experience behind me. Um, and then I had the, an opportunity to, to actually go and play in Norway for the club that I was going over and, and doing camps for. 
Um, and I also became their assistant manager at the same time. So I went as the, the first team goalkeeper um, and their assistant manager, um, which was tricky because it was sort of, you know, if I made a mistake in a game, it was very, as, as goalkeepers do, it's a clinical sort of decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm then having to sort of tell them, because obviously my, my Norwegian wasn't great, but um, that obviously they were either played poor or played good, but I'm on, I'm on the back end of it. Um, yeah. So that was very strange, but again, a, a huge experience. And then after a year of, of being in Norway, um, it, it just wasn't for me. I kind of sat down and thought, well, I'm not progressing much as a coach. Um, you know, I've got to a level now where, although I was only level two at the time, um, I just needed to, to push myself a little bit more and I felt back in England was the right place to go. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, I had a girlfriend at the time that obviously has now become my wife, but she was very supportive at the time and, and obviously that was a decision that I made. So I came back to England um, and I came back to England with, with nothing planned, nothing prepared to, to sort of get into. Um, but then I had an opportunity to, to go to a local football club and it was my first sort of academy role. Um, and that was with Warsaw Football Club um, within their Cat Free um, Academy uh, in 2014. So obviously I've gone to uni, gone, gone to work abroad and then come back to England and, and got my first sort of academy role. Um, now, before, obviously, I got to Warsaw, my, my, my ambition was always to, to work for Birmingham City, and that's the reason why I wanted to get into coaching. He's, he's uh, a poor Birmingham, Birmingham Yeah, I'm a Birmingham, and I'm a Birmingham boy, so, you yes. know, that's something. And, and I, I, would, I would have worked for the club even to cut the grass with a pair of scissors. Um, so, obviously, then a job come up at Birmingham. Um, I won't sort of share the CV and uh, cover letter that I wrote because it was very embarrassing. It was more of a sort of, <laughs> sort of like, you know, I'm a Birmingham City fan. I'd love to work for the club. Oh, it means everything to me. And no idea why, but they offered me an interview. Wow. Um, so within eight months of being at Warsaw, I went for the interview. Uh, I went, I'd done the first stage, went away and then had a phone call to, to do a second stage interview with mm. the academy manager at the time. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, right, you know, this, this is big. Um, and then someone who, who I know quite well now, but obviously he was a stranger at the time, uh, come into the, the waiting room and was like, oh, mate, you in, in for an interview? I was like, yeah, he went, you're the only one I've seen this week. And this was like a Thursday or Friday. So then all of a sudden I'm start panicking, thinking, oh God, I think I'm the only one. Um, so then the pressure come on and I did the session and then, uh, went into a room after and they offered me the role of the academy goalkeeping coach at Birmingham City so um, I and bet, that was, I bet you were buzzing right now yeah well that was a category 2 job and that was in 2015 so sort of the ambition of what I wanted to do kind of hit reality obviously at the time I didn't know what type of coach I was going to be but I wanted to work for Birmingham City as a coach um, and then to have that opportunity to do so, uh, there was no way I was turning it down. Um, and obviously, that they were in the championship and they were Category 2. Um, well, they're, they're, I think they're the second best Category 2 at the time yeah. uh, academy. So, obviously, it was it was up there. And then that's when I learned more as a coach and I became uh, a UEFA B licensed uh, coach and also a UEFA B goalkeeping, goalkeeping um, yeah. coach. So, I've done both both kind of directions along with the youth modules. Um, so at Birmingham, I really, really learned the trick of the trade as, as a coach and, and how to sort of coach individuals within teams and how to coach certain individuals within their learning and, and obviously progressing as a coach from there. Um, and then the, the biggest opportunity I had at Birmingham was, was during the summer months while I was taking my UEFA B licence. The first team had um, two games on the same night as pre-season. Yeah. Uh, one was at Shrewsbury and one was at uh, Walsall. So, obviously, against my former club for the first team, I had a phone call off the goal first team goalkeeping coach at the time, who was Kevin Paul, mm. uh, who was, you know, my idol when I was growing up, him and Ian Bennett for the, for the Blues. Um, and then, obviously, he, he offered me to, to take the first team at Walsall. So, nice. I mean, I, I was, I think I dropped the phone and I was, it was, Oh, it was awkward, but obviously I, I didn't say no. I took the opportunity. Yeah, uh, didn't know what goalkeeper I was having. Um, 
and then obviously I've turned up uh, on the day. I'm getting ready. I'm getting prepped at West Hills, the training ground, and I'm ready to go. And I know I've got Connell Truman, who is now the first team goal, well, the, the the first team goalkeeper yeah. at the minute uh, with Lee Camp. Um, and at the time, he was an under twenty three. He's coming through. Uh, and then in steps Thomas Kuzak, uh, you had wow. the Champions League winner, Premier League winner, and I'm just standing there going, wow, like, <laughs> I've gone from under nines yesterday night to obviously the first team and, and, and a calibre of goalkeeper like that, yeah, uh, yeah. which was, you know, an experience I'll never forget and an experience that has really propelled me to, to obviously sort of coach the older age groups as well now. Mm. Um, and then... You know, over a period of time, I was there for three years, three and a half years. I get a phone call from Wolves, who at the time were in the championship. That it was the season they got promoted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and and the goalkeeping coach there, who was Ali Williams, uh, the head of goalkeeping there, um, who, who's now the first team goalkeeping coach at, at Coventry, uh, along with Scott Fry, who was the under, uh, who did my role during um, the time when I first went in, uh, offered me a role there. Um, and they'd had like you know applications and, and stuff, but they wasn't, uh, I guess, happy with with what they received. Um, and they offered me the role to go across. So, you know, looking at where they were and where Birmingham were, I had three years, great years at Birmingham, but each you know each season ended in a relegation fight. So I thought, you yeah. know what, I've not, I'm, I can't miss up the opportunity to work for a Cat One club. Uh, and again, one of the biggest Cat One clubs, um, and work for a Premier League club. Um, yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, I know I've, I've been speaking for about twenty minutes now, but that's obviously a lot of experiences to to get me where I am today. No, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, so there you are. No, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a it's a really good journey, obviously, especially going abroad and and uh, being there for many years and coming back and and then getting your your opportunity to to go to Birmingham. Um, mm, and then how, mm. how it's led how it's led on from there is fantastic and that, that's obviously the story of, of Kuzak and, and having the opportunity yeah, to do oh, that yeah, yeah I mean and, and, and that's the biggest thing in terms of if any obviously coaches are listening to this and even even players that are, are trying to get through that if you look at the list that I've spoken about um, Wolves is my first full time mm. um, so obviously most of it has been volunteer or part time so I've gone through nine well seven seven eight years yeah. of, of really grafting and, and and periods of sitting there going you know what I, I could easily just give it up yeah. um but obviously you've got to get through those times of where you feel like nothing's going to happen to to obviously be successful mm. um so that's the biggest and, thing I'll probably take away and, from my experiences and, and as i've always said like every single coach that makes it um, to the level you're at now, you've all come from grassroots. Mm. It's just, it's just how, how much of the of the experience you want to put in, how much effort you want to put in to to achieve your goal, really. Yeah. Um, so, exactly. so we lead on quite nicely onto the next question. I think you, you've already you've already touched on it. So when did you know you wanted to to have a career in goalkeeping coaching? When when, when was the point? Um, yeah, that the the, the point was um, obviously when you know I, I had the opportunity to be. Um, the elite centre goalkeeping coach as a, as a yeah. kind of coach lead as a goalkeeping coach um, but I'd, I'd, I'd obviously done previous goalkeeping sort of things before that uh, mm. with Wickham um, but I was also doing the outfield stuff at the same time so it was just getting a mix yeah. um, and then obviously when I had the opportunity to, to obviously overtake um, and, and come in and, and kind of lead it was, was the time where I thought yeah I think that will be the role for me yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, I look at it and it is a difficult role to get into because at many football clubs, there are up to 20 coaches for outfielders. Yeah. Um, whereas most clubs now only have two or three goalkeeping coaches. So I kind of, you know, stubbed my toe a little bit because I, I left myself a little bit more difficulty to get into clubs. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, to get into it was obviously some of that you know, I, I was I was going to fight for, um, which mm. thanks for, thankfully I did. But yeah, that, and, uh, I'd say that was the biggest turning point for me. Yeah, credit to you as well, obviously, to, to end up with Wolves. has got a, a fantastic reputation for, for their academy and and to, to be the 19-14 to 14 lead, you, you must have done very well. So, hats no, off to you, mate. You. Yeah, thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. And I'll um, see you all started with yourself. <laughs> oh, I know. 
I'll take some credit, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, um, one thing for me, uh, being obviously an outfield player and, and being an out, uh, like mainly outfield coach, uh, I tend to neglect the goalkeepers. So just having you on, um, it, it helps me a lot as well, just to, to make sure that I continue to support the goalkeepers. Don't, um, put, us, it... don't put us in the compost seat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that will lead us uh, quite nicely on. So um, if you could tell us just a, obviously tell us as much as you want or as little as you want. Obviously, I don't want any other good clubs sort of listening and taking any ideas of you. But um, just how you how you support the goalkeepers at Wolves. Um, so we can start, obviously, a lot of clubs might have a syllabus. Um, so have you got a syllabus for the goalkeepers? Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I can tell you as much as I can. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we've got a syllabus that we put in place for the, for the younger age groups and then for the older age groups. Yeah. Um, although it follows the same route, route so a four week syllabus we have. So we, we obviously work on a full ro- four week rotation. Yeah. Um, we obviously differ, defer it to, to obviously the younger age groups, foundation phase, YDP, and then the PDP, uh, which is youth development and obviously the professional development. So within my kind of zone of, of the foundation phase, our full week um, is very sort of intensive. Um, obviously making sure that the goalkeepers are getting a massive high repetition of, of whatever we're working on um, and it's always based around the fun um, and the enjoyment so you know I've got little Jimmy who's under nine um, and if he's not having any fun within our syllabus or within our sessions then one is not going to learn and two is not want to be a goalkeeper Yeah. Um, so as a goalkeeper you know although you know I'll touch on it a little bit later but it's massive in terms of the psychological side. So obviously if I'm, you know, scoring, well, not me, but if, if the session then is conceding a lot of goals and we're going to make sure that the syllabus in, is in place for him to, to develop, obviously, the, the, the technical and tactical, um, yeah. also the physical and the psychological um, elements of it as well. Good stuff. Yeah. Any coaches, obviously, um, will be listening to this. Uh, it doesn't matter what age group, what level of football, um, the one of the main elements is fun, and it's it's oh, nice yeah. to hear. Yeah. It's nice to hear that obviously, at, even at the level of, of Wolves, um, that is one of the main focuses, especially especially foundation phase. I probably couldn't bang on enough about fun before any element, especially when it comes to the foundation phase. They've they've got to have that. They've got to be hooked almost on football, haven't they? At that age group, wanting yeah. to wanting to improve and wanting to love the game. Before definitely. they can even think about developing. Yeah, definitely. And, and like, if you know, when, when I first started at Wickham, it's, you know, we've got school children. Um, whereas now I've got, obviously, you know, the word elite players. Um, mm. But they're both on the same level. They're, they're all children. They're all kids, exactly. first and foremost. So, you know, although, you know, we're trying to produce football players in terms of professional sense, um, and obviously the community side that I used to work in was more of a, you know, making sure that their, their social side is a lot more um, yeah. built and developed um, than, than obviously being a professional player. They're still the same. Um, you know, they want to have fun. They want to fall in love with the game, which is the biggest thing. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. Um, so what does what is an average day look like? So we'll, t- we'll talk about, um, you can go with any age group. What's the, the average session sort of look like, the structure or, or the day for, for them? Um, so, obviously, in terms of, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on it in terms of my day, because um, yeah. then it'll build, in, build into their day. So, obviously, yeah. I'll, I'll turn up nice and early, get a little gym session in for myself. Um, and then, obviously, just, just make sure um, I'm pre- prepping and planning. So, from a goalkeeping point of view, I've got to make sure that I'm touching base with the outfield coaches as well um, and, and looking at, the syllabus that we're working on for that week, but also making sure that it also entwines with what they're working on for that day yeah. um, and that session. So, you know, there's no point us working on cutbacks and, and they're working on um, something which is completely different because I'll then throw a goalkeeper in their session and the goalkeeper's not working on what we've been working on and it just can go up in the air. Yeah. So obviously we've got to make sure that the planning's in place and then obviously the, the, the boys come in quite early uh, from obviously school. Um, so it's almost a, a sort of straight away from school sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, they'll come in, they'll have a little bit of a plyometric session. So working with the sports scientists, making sure that they're fully prepped and fully warmed up. Um, and then they'll come in. So the goalkeepers will come in our session. Uh, outfielders will go in the outfield session. And obviously we'll have about an hour together 
uh, which is the max and the minimum is probably uh, the least sorry is about 20 minutes so obviously making sure that if we've got a 20 minute session it's a, it's a more high repetition just so they're getting the maximum out of it yeah uh, and then the boys obviously merge within the outfield session um, but that doesn't mean I've finished I'll then obviously go with the boys to the outfield session and coach them within the outfield session mm. um, and it might even change a little bit where obviously we, we take some of the outfield players as well um, within our session to give it a bit more of a realism um, in terms of yeah. what we're working on um, and then obviously the boys will, will we try and get the goalkeepers to do a little bit of a, a programme at the end just to work on a bit more technique um, and obviously then the boys go home um, but we also do external stuff as well, um, especially obviously in the current um, situation we find ourselves in. Um, but obviously, when we're when we're back and and when we are when we are have been uh, at the academy building, then obviously we make sure there's an external external part as well where they're learning from home. Amazing, good stuff, mate. So, um, can you give us a typical session that you would do? Let's go. Let's go under fourteen. So just a, a couple of ideas for coaches that, who are watching this, who are goalkeepers. Um, yeah, can if, sort of use. if I can share my screen, mate, I'll, um, I'll put one of them on little sessions up. Obviously, it's not a full session, but obviously it just gives you a, an idea of, of what we're trying. That'd be amazing. If you, if you can't share it, what I'll do, if you ping it to me, and then I'll be able to put it in the, the video as well. We'll try and share it. Sound. Let me know if it comes up. And uh, you need to make me host, I think, mate. All right, no worries. Mm. Hang on a sec. Oh, I don't think I know how to make you make your host. <laughs> I'm on the on my photo. Do you know the little three dots? Hang on. No, I don't think I could do it on the iPad. Oh, okay, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll send it over. Um, do you want yeah. me to send it I'll, over later? I'll literally add it in now, so you can yeah. talk through it, and then I'll I'll add it into to the video now, so don't worry too much. Okay, what well, is in later on? Yeah, well, obviously I'll I'll, I'll attach it in now, so people can people can see it, and you just talk us through it. All right, Ed, do I uh, ping it over to you? Uh, mate, you don't, don't have to do it now. Just ping it over after. So talk for it now. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then <laughs> ping me after, and I'll and I'll, and I'll uh, swap it about. So we find. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can edit edit some of me at Erms as well. Right. That's. It. I, I'll put so, I'll put subtitles on for everyone else as well. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we, we, within our uh, within our goalkeeping session, we uh, we tend to look at um, sort of three parts. Um, so within the goalkeeping session, we always want possession sort of start of the session if that makes sense yeah um so obviously the modern day goalkeeper which which is also gonna obviously develop as as the premier league and and the professional sort of football develops as well and evolves that the goalkeeper has to be really good with his feet so it's really stimulating the younger ones to sort of make sure that we're, we're, we're getting a high possession um session in as well to the start of the session so the first 15 minutes we'll work on a lot of footwork um, and then we'll, we'll we'll then go into a bit of a handling one. So um, I'll take one of our weeks. So our first week, um, sorry, our first part of the session, uh, maybe that we might be playing around. Um, so we do a session of playing around, playing around from the back, opposed and unopposed. Um, and again, a lot of high repetition. So they're, they're able to play without pressure, but also able to play with pressure. Yeah. Um, and then we'll look at some handling. So it might be... A, just a, a typical um, W catch or sort of low sight, low diving saves uh, like mm -hmm. scoops. Um, and then we'll then move into the main part of the session, which would be a shot stopping part. So obviously it's bringing all ele both those elements in. So yeah. it might be a play around to then play through. Um, and then obviously a little bit of a sort of made up loss of possession that the ball then turns around and, and sort of, kind of, again, a transition that they have to then defend the goal. Yeah. Um, so it's almost a an emphasis of initiate the attack and then obviously defend the goal to finish off. Um, so it's in the loads of realism in there. And again, high repetition, high repetition, high repetition. 
just making sure the ball's always rolling so we don't try and stop it too much. Yeah. Um, we may stop the possession part and the handling part, but we make sure that the shot stopping part is, is just bang, 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 just getting loads of realism out. Yeah, excellent. I'll, That's, uh, um, it's, a, it's an important thing, obviously, especially, again, in the foundation phase, um, lead, leading into the YPD. It's the repetition, isn't it? They've got to, they've got to be able to do these the techniques and, and the technical stuff again and again and again. Yeah, um, and have the muscle memory. It's important, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, even with our sessions, um, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the the wheel. We're just making mm-hmm. sure that each individual within the session is getting what they need. Um, yeah. You know, and and if we've got three goalkeepers, we have to make sure that the session is designed around each three of those goalkeepers. It's not just yeah. based around one or based around them as a group. Um, so obviously we've, we've got like sort of overriding learning objectives in for the session. So what we yeah. want to see from them all, but then obviously the boys will have, you know, we'll, we'll write up individual uh, objectives for each of the boys as well to get at the session. So we're, we're, we're sort of promoting the session for the development, but then we're also promoting the development for each individual. Yeah. And this is why the planning phase is so important, isn't it? It just allows you yeah, to, to make, sure, make sure that you're on target with all those. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, with a planning, we 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 obviously well from from my side of view, um, I make sure that my plan is based around each individual rather than putting a session down first. Yeah, um, I look at who I've got in, what they need to work on, and then obviously draw up the session from there. Yeah, excellent. Right. Um. So, so I've spoken about coaching styles and a lot of these. Um. And obviously, you've got quite a wide range of of ages from nine to fourteen. Um, do your coaching styles differ between the ages um, and give us an example of, of how they maybe do so are they, are they, are they more command as they, as they obviously got through the ages is there a lot of um, trial and error with the younger ages yeah so obviously you know like we spoke about we, we'll make sure first and foremost it's fun so that also comes from ourselves as coaches um, and from myself as a coach Obviously, I don't want to go in and just go, oh, lads, look, we're doing this today. And it's just all bland and it's just one one monotone. So it's just making sure that we're sort of, you know, with the younger age groups, they're saying nines, tens, elevens. It's very vibrant. It's very sort of enthusiastic with our, with our coaching. Um, yeah. And then obviously when we move into the, the 12s and 13s and 14s, obviously now they're, they're starting to sort of work towards those scholarships and work towards a little bit more of a, a serious sort of journey. Um, so obviously we've got to make sure that our kind of approach is a little bit, I'd probably say a little bit more commanding, but obviously we've got to make sure that they're having a player ownership as well. Yeah. Um, so it's that sort of being a little bit less of a friend to them, but a little bit more of a, an authoritative figure, but making yeah, sure obviously yeah. we're not to a point of an authoritative figure that we, we obviously take away the fun element of it. Um, and again, just making sure that the boys are always ticking over and the boys are always on it. The boys are always switched on. Amazing. But it, like, start. yeah, but in terms of my approach, I wouldn't say I, I, I sort of differ too much between the age groups. Yeah. Um, it's just how I sort of do it individually. So obviously if I've got them as individuals or if I'm having a chat individually with them, Obviously, my, my, my tone might be a little bit different to them depending on how they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose di- different languages sometimes, um, depending on, on the age group, um, some would understand. So, obviously, yeah, with the yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. mate. Excellent. Right, we're coming to an end. Um, so, all I'm asking now is aspirations in the game. Now, you've had a little taste of, uh, of first-team football um, when, you, when you had the opportunity to, to go in for the pre-season friendly. Um, is that something that where you want want to want to get to? Um, do, you, do you enjoy the the academy? Do you enjoy the the? the yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like you know, uh, as I've mentioned at the start, my my journey's been sort of a lot of variations of, of, of age groups, a lot of variations of, of sort of abilities. Um, so you know, for me, I, I, I didn't have. I had a conversation not longer back. Uh, with my boss um, in terms of what my aspirations were. So I'll probably say the same thing really in terms of I want to be, I don't like the word expert, but let's say I want to be an expert within my role uh, before I progress. So I've got to a stage now where I feel like I need to learn and learn and learn and learn. 
to, to what I do now to then get a better coaching kind of principles in place that I obviously develop boys better. And then obviously then I'll probably move into an older age group band. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll probably say within the next five years, I want to be that expert within my age group that I'm in now. Um, and then in five years time, maybe look at a 16s or 18s position. Um, and then 10 years time, maybe look at a 23s or first team. Yeah. I've, I've sort of, you know, where I am now, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I don't, I don't want to move on too quick. If that makes sense. No, I'm, glad, I'm I'm really glad you said that because um, I agree because I, I speak to a lot of coaches and uh, and they sort of say they want to they want to move on to this they want to move on to that and even when it comes to their badges I think sometimes mm-hmm. they just want to rattle through their badges and try and get as many qualifications as possible. Yeah. Um, but some of the some of the better coaches that I've met, um, they've sort of got their qualification. They've and they they sometimes so sometimes they've gone from two to their B license and it's taken them about ten years. Yeah, and first yeah. of all, first of all, you think like you ask why, um, and then when they go into detail and they and they explain sort of they've wanted to make sure they embed the principles mm, of, of mm. level two and stuff before they go into the B license, and it's the same with with, with what what you've said. Um, I re- I think if you're in a role, make sure that you have fulfilled that role, to, yeah, uh, to the yeah, be- to, yeah. to the best of your ability before you even think about moving on. Definitely, um, and it's so, like I, I was like that with, in terms of my my. Um, you know my qualifications when I when I got into the the position at Warsaw, I was like, mm. I'm only level two. I need to if I need to if I'm going to progress, I need to do this, 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 this. So obviously I'm applying, I'm applying, I'm applying. But it wasn't sort of now. Well, now now it looks like it was just rushed. Um, and if I you know if I had to do it again, I'd probably wait a little bit longer. Um, mm. And it's just like driving a car; you don't learn until you've passed. So obviously yeah. you need to take away sort of what you've learned to then progress and then go on to the next stage after that. Yeah. For, totally for me agree. anyway. Totally agree. Right. Last two. So we do, um, we do this player and coach. So um, if you could give one bit of advice, we do coach first to any coach uh, wanting to obviously uh, maybe have a career in football, or even get themselves into to coaching and goalkeeper coaching. What would you, what would you give them? Um, well, obviously, we've, we've mentioned a, a few already in terms of, obviously, don't rush. Um, but yeah. my, my biggest thing, and um, for me, I feel the way I've got to where I am now was, was just networking. Um, yeah. Just getting on with, with, obviously, as many people as you can. Obviously, don't bombard people, but it might be a case that, you know, you get to know someone. Um, not Not... Too personally, because obviously you know you're not going to know many people personally within the game too too quickly. Um, but you really have to sort of delve into to many things to to get to a, a pathway that you want to choose. Yeah. Um, so obviously network with as as many coaches as you can from different different backgrounds, different pathways, um, and eventually you may find yourself having a break or having a an opportunity somewhere that it may fall into your lap and, and obviously that's your pathway then. Um, and it might even be something like, like myself, you know, that sort of pathway to a goalkeeping coach that then transitioned to where I am today. And without doing that, obviously, you know, that was just me networking with you guys and just saying, look, I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll take the reins. I'll do, do the shift. And then obviously I've got the opportunity to, to take it on board. So the biggest one would be networking for me. Yeah, totally agree. Good. Um, what about player? So, any player? Let's go. Goal, obviously, goalkeeper. Um, any young goalkeeper that maybe hasn't, uh, maybe likes playing goal for on the on the playground. So we go right, right, strip it right back to grassroots. Uh, likes, li- likes playing in goal and training. If he wants to, obviously, do well in the game and enjoy the game as much as possible. Advice for him. Uh, my advice would be be patient. Um, if you look at the statistics, um, you know, professional players, yes, they start early. Yes, they have debuts early now. But if you still look at goalkeepers, their average debut is around 22, 23. So in terms of a goalkeeper, um, you've got plenty more sort of time to develop and, and progress than, than maybe yeah. an outfield, outfield player may have. Um, and also, you know, the retirement age of a, of a goalkeeper is also longer. 
So you come into the game later, but you leave the game later as well. So you still have yeah. that, that period of the same period of journey and, and, and kind of in the career path um, as, as a player if you ever to make it. But um, I wouldn't rush. I wouldn't sort of go, oh, it's not working out. I'm never going to get the opportunity. And if you're only 16, let's say, you've still got at least four years before, um, you know, you, you may be taken. And, and also, I'd probably say, don't always look at being a goalkeeper for training sessions. So mm. don't just go in goal for the sake of you going in goal just to take shots. Go as an outfield player at times. Work your feet as well because, the, the, you know, the goalkeeper is, is a role that's evolving. Yeah. Um, so don't just go in goal because you, your team are having shots. You can go and have a shot because that's working your distribution. Um, yeah, so that, that will probably be my, uh, my feedback to, to obviously the players. It's difficult the players want, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. definitely. Um, mate, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for sparing uh, your evening, um, spending some time with us. Um, it sounds like you've done very, very well. Um, if I'm ever up towards your way, can I pop in? Yeah, definitely, mate. The kettle's always on. Yeah. <laughs> no, stuff, obviously, thanks for, having the, uh, thanks for having me on. And obviously, you know, I think it hopefully shows that uh, you can start from anywhere to, to get where you want to be. And it's just about being hard, hard, at, hard at yourself and, and really working, mate. So, obviously, you know, it was great to work with you 10 years ago and you never know. Yeah, yeah, mate. I'll, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to get together again, mate. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, it, 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 um, obviously, another, another good thing as well is uh, Wickham will be playing Birmingham. <laughs> well, hopefully. What's, what's, yeah. the, uh, what's the scores? <laughs> 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 we've, got shot, we've got shouting at the minute if we're losing. <laughs> yeah, you need three points. But uh, no, hopefully, mate, no. that, that'd be it. If uh, if Wickham are, I'll, I'll, I'll pop up when they play Birmingham. We we we'll have to if we well as long as we're not working and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully we're, we're we're back to a little bit of normality where we can we can attend the game and it'll be a yeah. good day. I don't, don't know about you. I, I was buzzing when when they did get promoted. Um, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll feel myself dancing around the room and everything, mate. It's uh, obviously that they're, they're, they're the club that gave me my opportunity, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've had a soft spot in my heart to, to obviously Wick and Wanderers and, and where yeah. they are now is incredible yeah same for me mate I spent eight good years and got always always have a soft spot for them so um, fair play to them well done Gareth and, and, and everyone yeah, connected definitely. with the club definitely definitely Class. right Chris take care of yourself mate and you um, mate and you and I'll, and I'll speak to you very soon perfect take care mate cheers mate bye speak soon cheer out cheer out